people hear the word invasion, they think of all kinds of things. Wars, alien attacks, monsters. In the early 60s, some people were even worried about the British invasion in music. And lots of people were worried about the foreign car invasion. Boy, well, that's just crazy. But then again, what is an invasive species? It's any organism or living thing that adapts quickly to a new environment, reproduces itself, and spreads rapidly into new locations. By the way, I'm the Bugmobile. I'm a talking car. Ich heiße Bugmobile. Ich bin ein Schreckenwagen. Many invasive species are foreigners, originating from somewhere else, often from another continent. Species that are not native to our environment are termed exotic. When a species is transplanted to a new locale and it doesn't have any natural predators, it can quickly take over an area and pose a real threat to the environment by knocking the whole system out of balance. A species can be any kind of an organism, a plant, an animal, an insect, or a virus. Of course, mankind as a species is the worst offender for knocking systems out of balance. Disturbances such as strip mining, logging, or leveling land at construction sites create opportunities for invasive species to move in. Or you may have a relatively undisturbed area and introduce an invasive species into it and the natural balance may begin to shift. For centuries, humans have introduced new plant and animal species to different parts of the world. Some of these have been very beneficial, such as wheat from Egypt or cattle from Asia. Some introductions haven't worked out so well. The starling, a medium-sized black bird, was originally brought by European settlers. One organization wanted to collect all the birds ever mentioned in the works of William Shakespeare and bring them to the United States. So they released some 80 to 100 starlings in New York City's Central Park in the 1890s. It turned out to be a poor tribute. In less than 80 years, these highly adaptive and prolific birds had reached as far as Alaska. And today, many people view these birds as a nuisance. Some introductions have been downright disastrous. The giant hogweed, a member of the parsley and carrot family, was a tall, majestic plant originally brought to the U.S. around 1920 as a landscape plant. It got out of the garden into the wild and is still spreading across northwestern Pennsylvania. It causes painful skin rashes when you come in contact with it, and it is now listed on Pennsylvania's noxious weed list. Multiflora, or Japanese rose, was another foreign species run amok. It was originally promoted by the USDA as an excellent source of erosion control, a living fence for livestock, and wildlife cover, and thousands of free cuttings were given out to create hedgerows. Today, millions of dollars are spent trying to get rid of it. It does provide an excellent habitat and food source for many birds and small mammals. However, it is extremely hardy and hard to get rid of because it can self-seed and quickly take over an area. Birds scatter the seeds widely. It will take over pasture land and cows become unwilling to graze in the fields containing this thorny plant. It has also been added to the federal and state noxious weed lists. In the South, Kudzu was originally introduced as a forage crop like hay for feeding animals. It too traveled beyond its original intended boundaries and virtually took over huge pieces of the southern landscape, crowding out all other plants and many animal habitats. It's estimated that more than three million acres of land in the U.S. are lost to invasive species. Invasive species cost our economy an estimated $138 billion a year. What does that mean to each person? If you were to line up $138 billion worth of $1 bills end to end, they would circle the earth 523 times. People didn't see what was around the corner when they unknowingly imported invasive species that went spinning out of control. More often than not, invasive species come about by accident. Oh no! In a science class, you might learn about vectors. In physics, a vector often describes a force associated with a direction. In ecology, a vector is a force of nature. 
and it too is associated with a direction, the spread of a species to a new area. Because of their ability to spread rapidly, invasive species may represent a serious threat to agriculture, forests, parks, urban areas, human health, or maybe even the environment in your own backyard. Sometimes unwanted organisms get here without our knowledge, and scientists try to figure out their vectors, how they got here. Unwelcome plants, animals, or disease-causing microorganisms may hitchhike to a new location as a passenger on a boat, train, airplane, or automobile. A strange seed can come loose from a car tire tread, or bounce off a train, or be eaten by a bird and deposited somewhere. Hey! There are lots of vectors. Because we have so much world trade, it gets easier and easier to introduce exotic species. Every ship coming into port, every plane landing, and every truck crossing a border is a potential vector for invasive species. Today we're going to look at just four different organisms that have invaded the Northeast. The Asian longhorned beetle, purple loosestrife, plum pox virus, and zebra mussel. They illustrate problems we might face with insects, plants, diseases, and aquatic animal life. These troublesome species wouldn't be such a problem if they had just stayed in one place, but they don't. They are invaders. They get around. I get around, yeah, get around, round, round. I get around, I get around.